So as we're hurtling towards the end of 2018, uh, smartphone manufacturers are putting the final touches on the devices that they're going to be shipping in Q1 of 2019. But those devices have to have mobile processors, and that means we need to have some mobile processor announcements so that we know what's going to be available when the new devices come out. Now, we already know what uh, Huawei are offering with the Kirin 980, but we haven't heard anything from Qualcomm or from Samsung. Samsung. Well, that has all just recently changed because Samsung announced their new processor for 2019, the Exynos 9820 or 9820. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So traditionally, the flagship phones from Samsung in the Galaxy range and in the Note range contain the latest a flagship processor from Samsung itself with the Exynos processors. Of course, in some parts of the world, they also use Qualcomm processors. So now this new device, the 9820, is gonna be seen in kind of the flagship Galaxy and Note devices, whatever they may be and however they may be marketed that we're gonna see in 2019. So what is it? Well, first of all, of course, it is a system on a chip. That means you've got a CPU and a GPU and lots of other components that all work together to power our smartphones. So the new device is an octa-core processor, but with three different groups of processors that run uh, at different uh, speeds. So first of all, it, uh, Samsung are telling us that it has two uh, custom-designed Mongoose 4, fourth generation, so M4 processors, and then it also has two Cortex-A75 processors from ARM. And then for the energy efficient cores, it has four Cortex-A55 cores. Now, if you compare that to the Exynos 9810, which had four M3 cores and four Cortex-A55 cores, and then you can compare it to the uh, Kirin 980, which has, again, that tri-cluster idea. It has two Cortex-A76 cores running at a higher clock frequency and two Cortex-A76 cores running at a lower clock frequency and, again, four Cortex-A55 cores. So Samsung seems to be following this idea of having three groups of processors where you've got two very high performance ones that are good at getting those kind of single threaded uh, jobs done very, very quickly, two just slightly less powerful cores to kind of round out the idea of that high uh, performance kind of grouping of CPUs, and then four energy efficient cores for handling all of those background tasks and all of those uh, simple tasks. And then when it comes to GPU, we see now that we've gone from the Mali G72, which is in the uh, 9810, over to the G76, uh, which is in the 9820, and it's the same uh, GPU that we find in the Kirin 980. Now, interestingly, Samsung have opted for two more cores, two more GPU cores in the Mali uh, uh, G76 compared to what Huawei went with in the Kirin. And basically, overall, that GPU uh, should see about a 35 to 40% uh, gaming performance uh, increase. Now, you might be saying, well, hold on, how can it go from 18 uh, cores down to 12 cores and yet still be faster? And that's basically because the individual cores in the uh, G76 are actually much more powerful than the cores that were in the G72. And so one core can do more, so you need less of them, but overall, you still get a performance uplift. So a few more things to mention about the 9820. First of all, it supports LPDDR4, low power DDR4 RAM, and it has an amazingly fast LTE modem, which can support up to two gigabits per second download and 316 megabits per second upload. Of course, those are all dependent on the service provided by your cellular carrier. There's also a new media decoder in this chip, which can support up to 8K 30 frames a second encoding and decoding, and 4K 150 frames a second decoding and encoding. So that's some really high-end and fast video formats there that are supported by Samsung. And this is all rounded off by a nice 10-bit uh, decode, which can be used for HDR 10-bit displays. But the biggest new addition to the 9820 compared to the 9810 is the inclusion of a NPU, a neural processing unit, which Samsung is saying can be used in conjunction with the camera for uh, image detection and therefore for setting the same, the right kind of conditions for taking the photo. And that's very similar to what uh, Huawei are doing with their NPU. It will be interesting to see what APIs the NPU supports because 
Android Pie, for example, has its own uh, neural networking interface that developers can use in their apps. And it'll be interesting to see what this NPU supports. Is it a homegrown one from Samsung or did it come, for example, from ARM? We don't know at the moment, but we do know that following the trend of companies like uh, Huawei and of Apple, the new Exynos now has an NPU. So a couple of other things to mention before we go on to look at some potential performance numbers for the 9820. One is that it's manufactured using an eight nanometer process from Samsung itself. So Kirin and uh, Apple are using the seven nanometer process from TSMC. This is using the eight nanometer process from Samsung itself. Now, will that one nanometer difference in seven and eight make much of a difference? Probably not, but it will be interesting to see when we actually have these chips in actual devices. In any case, there's definitely gonna be at least a 10% power efficiency saving compared to 10 nanometers going down to eight nanometers. And the last thing to mention before we go on to performance is that Samsung are uh, aiming for mass production of these by the end of the year. So we're already halfway through November. So basically in the next few weeks, there's gonna be mass production, which kind of fits into our timeline for new phones that are gonna be announced in Q1 of uh, 2019. Okay, let's look at some performance numbers. So Samsung have released some ideas of what they think the performance increases will be for the new processors. So let's start with Geekbench single score. Here for reference is the Exynos 9810. It scored 3,747. And also the Kirin 980 scores 3,378. So according to uh, Samsung's estimation, and these are my numbers, but using their percentage increases, we should see a speed of 4,496 in Geekbench when the new processors come out. And when you move over to multi-core, the existing uh, uh, score for the Exynos 9810 was just under 9,000, 8,946. Of course, we've seen the Kirin 980 smash that 10,000 barrier just with 10,024. And if uh, Samsung are true to what they're promising in terms of overall performance gain, we should also see the Exynos 9820 smash that 10,000 barrier and get 10,287. Okay, and there we have it, the Samsung 9820. We're seeing a move over to a two plus two plus four set up with those two high-end cores being the Mongoose 4 M4 processors and the rest of the cores coming from ARM. We see the uh, use of the Mali G76 with less overall cores, but actually an actual uplift in GPU performance. We've got an NPU for the first time in an Exynos processor, and it's built using Samsung's very own eight nanometer process. Well, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear what you think about the new Exynos processor in the comments below. And please don't forget to share this video because that will help us grow the community here at Gary Explains. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.